Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Green Wisdom Health Show. I'm Janet Lewis. And I'm Dr. Lewis. And today we're going to discuss with you a very sensitive subject. Many of you have uh, family, loved ones out there that have had this experience and you're hoping to avoid it as well because of watching them. It is called Hope for Alzheimer's and Dementia. And um, Dr. Lewis is going to discuss with us today many ways that we can start recognizing if we're headed towards one of these terrible diseases down the road, uh, natural products that we can do and supplementation that could help slow it down. And um, I don't know about reversing it. He's going to talk to us about that also. And we have lots and lots of questions to get to that you guys have been kind enough to send to us. And uh, we're going to make sure we try to answer as many of those as we can, as long as we can remember, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, with that being said, Dr. Lewis, can you um, tell us exactly what you want to tell people today about Alzheimer's and dementia and give them some hope? Yeah. You know, I always write about two or three hours worth of notes uh, and bullet points for this 30-minute show, so please uh, forgive me for not getting around to everything. Uh, first of all, it's a very devastating disease, and mark my words, what you're going to see in the very near future, like in 10, 15, 20 years, is we're going to lose a great amount of America's workforce because uh, you know how wonderful insurance companies are. They're going to say, well, you know, we're going to quit covering this and this and this and this, and so you're going to have to take one of the two workers from your house, the male or the female, to stay at home take care of mom or dad with dementia, Alzheimer's. Uh, so that's going to really hurt America's workforce. The the time to treat something, you know, I'm a chiropractor. We can't treat anything with, with supplements. But where did we lose our faith in God to realize that, oh, if you put in something really, really good, your body's going to work with it and do good with it. So the time to deal with it is before you get it. Now, I saw dementia slash Alzheimer's, and you need to go to a neurologist if you suspect you have this. I love our medical profession, and you should be doing our program also, in addition to. <clears throat> well, I saw it coming in my mother when she was in her, I guess, mid-60s, and my brother and I, Dr. James Lewis, who's an incredibly brilliant chiropractor, too, we started giving my mother lots and lots of stuff, and she was a willing participant, and we put off dementia slash Alzheimer's. Until, it didn't really kick her butt until she got around 88 to 92. At 92, it really got her, but... Uh, that's better than letting it progress in her mid-60s and, and have her and, and take her down that terrible road when she's 70. So we put it off about 25 years. Uh, here's the problem. And, and again, I'm not anti-medical. I go to medical doctors. I love medical doctors. I have the greatest respect for their knowledge and their commitment to helping people get well. But there was an article in the paper the other day that says, Drugs fail to slow decline in inherited Alzheimer's disease. Now, inherited would imply that it's genetic, but as you know, if you've listened to me, there's so many of our genes that will not express bad things if you get rid of environmental toxins and increase nutrients. And, you know, to a thinking man or woman, you say, well, if you increase nutrients, you're going to automatically detox. Bingo, you just won the prize. That's true. <clears throat> so it, it that article talked about the failed drugs uh, fail to prevent or slow the mental decline uh, they were trying to remove harmful protein that builds up in the brains of these people leading to you know bad dementia uh, the problem with that is and I'm not anti-drug but it's like you've got 80 holes in your roof and it's about to come a, th a thunderstorm and you're trying to patch one that's what you're doing with a drug you're not getting to the underlying cause well, you talked about your mother going into that at a later stage. Uh, I remember her being much younger, and we <laughs> thought she was going into dementia and Alzheimer's, and they had just put her on an, an acid reducer. Isn't that right? Wasn't yeah, that? I, I hadn't even I forgot that story, which is one of the signs of dementia or Alzheimer's, but sometimes it's just stress. Uh, yeah. Uh, my sister called me and says, you know, Stephen, my mama, you know, mama's making coffee with no water in the pot. She's turn it, trying to turn on the gas stove, can't get it going. And she's looking in the mirror and talking to herself, thinking she's talking to someone else. And she's urinating freely and cannot have a bowel movement. 
I said, oh, good Lord, I'm booked up. And I said, oh, never mind, I'll cancel everybody on the books. And I went to see her. Well, they just put her on a new acid reducer. And not that those things aren't sometimes necessary and appropriate, but uh, I said, well, she's not going to get any B12 you know, out of her meat. And we'll get further into that during the questions. But I said, if you've got to take it for feeling good i understand that and i gave her medical doctor the all the research about you know b12 deficiency and how that can decrease brain function and i said at the very least please give her a shot every week well her cute little md she i guess got offended she wouldn't do it and it's like so i had to put mom on massive doses of b12 you can't put somebody on the rda because you're not going to absorb it you got to put them on massive doses and it's got to be the good stuff and she popped out of it in about two or three weeks. She's a brand new woman. And that was many years before she actually did develop dementia. So sometimes it can be drug-induced, and you think that they're going down this slippery slope, and it's something they're taking. Uh, and, and blood pressure medicine is another one that, that does that. It, it'll make them be like they're somewhere else. Yeah. We've had them walk in our office that way, and they don't know what's going on, and it turned out to be their blood pressure medication. So it could be several. It could be statin drugs. We see yeah. that very, very often. And, again, I don't interfere with medical, you know, what the, what they do. I said, well, talk to your MD about this. Here's the book. Here's the research. Read that. Uh, one of the worst insults from a, a hormonal point of view is one of the worst insults to the brain is stress. Because then your adrenals get stressed, they release cortisol. We see people with super duper high cortisol, then it you know eventually gets fatigued and wears out, craps out, and goes down. To oh, we had one in here yesterday that had a five on his cortisol. So well, no wonder you feel like heck and you have anxiety on top of that, and you can't remember. And he runs a multi million dollar business. This has a, a very bad effect on the hypothalamus, and there's somewhere in my notes. God, I hope we get to it. I'll just mention it now. You have to feed the hippocampus. That's not a college for hippos. That's part of your brain. And I did a little research. <clears throat> There's a specific type. You know, we, we always sell the methyl B12, the good stuff. But there is only one company I know of that makes folinic acid. And I told Janet, I said, I know, I know. I keep asking you to buy all these supplements. I started remembering things. Uh, I remembered the code to our condo in Branson from months before and, and went on and on and on. It's called TMG, which is trimethylglycine, which is a major methyl donor, which means major detoxification. But it has a folinic acid, which feeds the hippocampus, which helps tremendously with short-term energy. So, so for those of you that walk into the next room and have a senior moment because we laugh about it because it's it's easier to laugh about it and say an oh crap uh <laughs> tmg have, or you have to strategically place all of your items so you can see them again when you get in the room uh that's yeah, a I huge have, one i have 12 flashlights hanging around because oh, i forgot where i left the last seven but i've always got one somewhere except they migrate like wildebeest they may all be in the rv and i have to bring them back into the house but so stress, you know, you've got to deal with that. Hypomethylation, which is lack of B-complex, and I've got notes here somewhere about it's B12, it's B6, it has to be the activated B6, it has to be the 5-MTHF, metfolin or quatrifolic, plus that folinic acid is a little bit different than the folic. So you've got to be very, very careful. Um, Janet, can you hand me that? The, the one over there, that, that bottle, it says Omega. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. Here's what I'm going to tell you, folks. One of my patients came in the other day, and she said, well, I'm taking this. This is from a famous doctor. And my Omegas, which is very, very incredibly important, critical for good brain function, mine, one gel cap has several times more EPA and DHA than this uh, Omega from a famous doctor. But this famous doctor put in b12 as cyanocobalamin if it says cyanocobalamin it is junk throw it away i don't care if it comes from a famous doctor and then you know he put in some other cheap stuff uh it's not good just because it comes from a famous doctor he put in folate instead of the 5-mthf that is sad because there's 
a lot of times that you'll have these uh, world-renowned doctors and then just to make more money off of it, they'll cut corners on the ingredients in it so there's more of a profit. Of course, we hear this from the big dogs out of the really premier supplement manufacturers, and they'll say, well, yeah, Dr. So-and-so, he used to use our stuff, which is the best of the best of the best, what we sell, and then they quit, and they went to this other company where they barely sprinkle a little bit of the real good stuff in so they can put it on the label, but it's uh, it's kind of like a taking a woman home and she takes off all her makeup anyway anyway there's not truth in advertising be careful what you fall for yeah i got the stink eye on that one so or like when a man wears a hat and you assume he has a full head of hair until he takes it off well that hurt honey <laughs> <laughs> so it works both ways let me let me talk about some of the causes of alzheimer's slash dementia and, and it's really and truly it's a protective response to three different processes inflammation hey that goes with every symptom and disease process it goes with suboptimal levels of nutrients so does everything else it 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 has to do with other synapse supporting molecules and the third is toxic exposure folks it's all inflammation oxidation and lack of nutrients and there are some uh key symptoms to start noticing that you may be developing alzheimer type symptoms um some of them are like poor judgment in decision making that's how i got old and wise because i was young and stupid so i i protest <laughs> inability to manage a budget um, i do that really well and i don't she gives me an allowance. <laughs> yeah, it, and it's not because he has dementia. It's just because I take care of him. I blow it on things that make me, well, never mind, stupid stuff. <laughs> uh, um, missing a monthly payment. So, the, you know, these are big things. Losing track of the date or season. I'll have to admit that I don't, you know, half the time I'm like, oh, it's another year here. But. I think it's 1973. Yeah. I, I'm I'm one of these strange end time people. I don't do out of time i don't i don't ha- i don't know n- n- dates of anything you, much uh, forget which day it is and remember it later uh you have trouble having a conversation you sometimes forget which word to use you misplace things and being unable to retrace your steps to find them <laughs> and losing things from time to time you know some of this stuff i get i mean you it's everyday life and too much stress yeah, it also is. how and, do you know the difference and some of it you know for me i noticed it that it started really getting bad after i had a hysterectomy and i know you talked a little bit about hormone uh imbalances or changes that can actually cause that as well right absolutely and so when someone has or gone through that kind of thing, what beside the the uh, folinic acid you mentioned, what else do you recommend for someone to take to try to bring some of that back? Well, and, and, and again, it's much better to do it beforehand. And if, if these disease processes don't show up, how do you know you prevented them? Well, you don't because, you know, according to FDA, we can't make any claims. We have something called optimum mem- memory. It has the ginkgo. It has the glycosides. It has something called venpocetine. It has huprazine alkaloids, which mostly is used more over in the Orient than here, but it's really good, really good product. Uh, the Omega Supreme, which is super duper, oh my God, high in the EPA, DHA. I won't make that comparison with this world famous doctor's crappy omegas. But just trust me, it's good. Now, listen closely, people. You want something that's really kick butt and inexpensive? Good, 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 good. Write this down. It's called B12 Folate Plus. Mm. Oh, my God. It's got the activated B6. Just a quick thing on B6. If you don't have enough, well, let's just say if you get enough of it, you have a great deal more energy. But that's the one that helps the neurotransmitters or the happy hormones cross from the gut to the brain crosses the blood brain barrier so if you're not happy or if your spouse is not happy with you give her some b activated b6 maybe you'll look prettier uh it has the folate but it's the metfolin that's the l5 methyl tetrahydrofolate that's the good stuff and then it has the b12 which is methylcobalamin that's the good stuff and it has like forty-one thousand percent of the rda this stuff will kick butt and take names. You do one a day, maybe two. 
don't take it at three to five in the afternoon because you will have too much energy. Most people won't sleep. It is super, super popular. And those are the things that feed the brain as well as energy, as well as the neurotransmitters to make you healthier and happier. What about GPC? You know, most people have not heard much about GPC. I know that's something that is in our stress response. Yeah, glycerol phosphocholine. That's that true. is the best. You know, we've heard of phosphatidylcholine, phosphatidylserine. They're really, really good for brain function. This GPC kicks butt in a good way. It's Yeah, it's in the stress response. The people love the stress response. Janet will give a couple for today and a couple for tomorrow, and people come in and buy two, three, four bottles. It's also in our prenatal, which helps you build a healthier baby brain. And we have it in a powder that's even stronger called Brain Vibrance. Um, and then we, we now started carrying it in GPC liquid. Uh, which I take. Yeah, I do too. You do I do two droppers of it in the morning. It tastes sweet. It tastes good. I do three. <laughs> He's an it, overachiever. Uh, um, but that some things. But between all of those things, it's like a, a really good deal, you know. And then there's little things that you can do with diet, right? As far as changing it, I know when we quit doing gluten, the taking the gluten out, it was amazing how much better your memory was. Yeah, and there's a lot of reasons why I promote keto, and, and that's just one of them because, uh, you know, and this goes back to a question Tara asked about isn't Alzheimer's type 3 diabetes and insulin resistance. Yes, ma'am, Tara, it is. And for those of you that want a coach other than what we do, check out Tara at Wiley Primal. This girl can kick butt and take names. She's absolutely awesome. And, yes, uh, it's type 3 diabetes. It's insulin resistance it's uh, inflammation it's oxidations and some of these symptoms can be very very subtle but some of them are like scary and we have a tendency to just dismiss it like facial blindness you see somebody and don't recognize them and i think well geez i've seen thousands and thousands of patients should i have remembered that person Decreasing mental clarity, especially later in the day, which goes back to your adrenals and cortisol. Decreasing interest in hobbies or reading. Uh, the inability to engage in complex uh, conversations, so to speak. And the ADD, ADHD, which is a brain thing also. Decreasing ability to recall what you read. And some people say, no, I don't want to read. I just had a pharmacist say, nope. Didn't read when I was in pharmacy school. I just listened. It's like, oh, God, people that don't read scare the heck out of me. Decreasing vocabulary. It's like, yeah, I throw in a big word once in a while. Mixing up words. Now, I've got to say, I, I take a little offense to that because Janet's just cute as she can be. She mixes up words, and that's, that's just part of who she is. She says, skating on thin water the other day. <laughs> and then she said something about it wasn't treading water. It was something else. And it's like, oh, she is so cute. But that's not dementia. It's she, genetic. <laughs> generic or something. <laughs> <clears throat> We're talking about that kind of thing, you know, uh, I'm going to work some of these questions in here. And if you're wondering how you can ask questions, you can do it on our website at greenwisdomhealth.com. There's a, actually a form there that you can submit, and, or you can be a, a member of Dr. Lewis's Shooting Straight, Shooting Straight with Dr. Lewis on Facebook. Um, a lot of people ask questions there, but we had one that wrote in on the website. His name was Nick, and he wanted to know what's good eating. And I think. You know, when this question came in, it came in about one o'clock in the morning, and I'm thinking he must have not been having good eating when he was doing it, and that's why he was asking. And sleep disruptions, one of the possibilities with dementia and Alzheimer's too. Well, that's what I was going to say. So, <laughs> when you're talking about Alzheimer's and dementia, what is good eating? What things should you be avoiding to um, take out of your diet, trying to trying to keep everything healthier? Well, I got excommunicated from part of my family for talking about veganism, and I've seen dozens and dozens of vegans' labs. And some people love being a vegan. It's okay with me if you want to do that. I still love you and respect you. But uh, I think keto is the way to go. Higher fat needs to be good fat, moderate protein, and then lots and lots of the good low-glycemic veggies. And I told a, a really good guy down in Florida, I said, just get you a keto book and just follow it. Uh, just do this, 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 and this. And your brain generally comes back because guess what your brain's made out of? Fat. Well, and um, so Nick, thank you for that question. Maybe you learned a little something there. And talking about veganism, 
there was another uh, question that we had about a movie that was called Game Changers about plant-based eating. And um, I think it's called GameChangersMovie.com, and it it completely blew uh, Lisa away because the movie focused com- the completely opposite of how they were eating. Um, and her and Vic are really good looking. Yeah, they were eating like ma- mainly like keto, no grains, low carbs. Um, and she's wanting to know what do you think about that? Do you think um, do you think eating just plant based diet? I guess is the best way to go. Or are they missing something? I don't think it's good, and I just posted something that came from Tara Wiley Primal. I posted on Shooting Straight with Dr. Lewis. For goodness sake, get on there. There's a little bit of good information. Uh, You know, everybody can read research that kind of clarifies or supports what we choose to believe, but what really happens is the reason people go vegan and feel better is because they finally, you know, are eating more and more vegetables, which is a good thing. But the problem is, in my opinion, animal products have a lot of nutrients that you really can't get out of fruits and vegetables. Now, Janet and I buy most of our meat from a farm that does it. You know, it's pasture-raised. It's clean. It's no antibiotics. It's no hormones. And it helps. But I think a varied diet uh, is really, really good. I think you need to go high fat. And it's better to go clean fat. There's a dirty keto and a clean keto. I think clean's by far better better for brain health and everything else and for insulin resistance that uh, Tara mentioned. Okay, very good. And Lisa said that she loves having you on speed dial, by the way, because that is the one good thing with these questions is you get to ask these questions and have a doctor answer them for you without the fee. So, Well, uh, let, let me beat you up a little bit, Lisa. Well, number one, let me apologize. I was up in Custer, South Dakota, and I didn't realize that Lisa and Vic lived there. It's like, oh, good Lord, I'd have taken you to lunch and then some. So I apologize for being an idiot. I really wish I could have met you. But Janet and I were driving across Colorado two or three years ago. Again, I don't do time real well. It might have been four or five years ago. And and Lisa wrote me a real long email. And I was like, oh, geez, I don't want to type that much. And I emailed her back. I said, here's my cell phone number. Call me between this time and this time because I'm going through Colorado. Lisa, it's okay to call me, please. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, you can have me on speed dial if you want. But Lisa's one of the ones that. Not only she will not abuse it, she doesn't use it as much. Same thing with Rob up in Lake Orion, Michigan. Call me, Rob. (laughs) And then uh, a question back that uh, has got to do with this show. Crystal said uh, her mother has Alzheimer's, and she's followed the Dr. Bredesen's diet to help slow it down. And as a family, we've read a few reports about that diabetes, genetics, and medications such as metformin contribute to decline in a person with the disease. Can you elaborate on anything about the drug and research about this? So that goes back to some of those uh, medications we were talking about that's actually making some of this a little bit worse, even though it's supposed to be helping something else, right? Yeah, and, you know, not being an MD, I'm not going to get too deep into it. Uh, Yeah, there's always a side effect of a drug, even if it's a simple aspirin a day. But metformin can help with the uh, high blood sugar and and the inflammation that causes that. There's there's always a trade-off. And talk to your medical doctor about that. The book she's talking about is called The End of Alzheimer's by Dr. Dale Bredesen. And I think it's an absolutely holy jeez very well written book it's pretty deep and the list that he's got 56 things you've got to check on and i could name all 15 and we do it all the time and some of the other ones are above my head but it's a good book and but all i can tell you is we got that covered you don't have to overthink this keep it simple but here's the thing Functional medicine is trying to get more and more popular for about the last 20 years, but it's people like Jeffrey Bland, David Jones, Paul Perlmutter, Mark Hyman, uh, Dr. Amon. You know, they're writing books, and that's really, really good. you got to find somebody that knows what they're doing and can do it, keep it simple, keep it easy, and that's where Janet and I come in. Good. So thank you for that question. And then Jonathan had another one about dementia. Uh, he just got back from a funeral for a brilliant doctor chemist who had dementia, which is, that's really sad. He obviously used his brain extensively, yet he had this crippling disease. Please comment on ways to strengthen the brain, feed the brain, whatever it needs to stay active. This is his biggest health fear because he's uh, had numerous head injuries 
and was told head knocks were a precursor to Alzheimer's. He also said, keep up the great work, Dr. and Janet. You guys are great. Love you, Jonathan. We'll see if we can't give you some good uh, advice here. Yeah, he's fun to talk to. Um, Yeah, you know, I've had a bunch of stupid head knocks because I went through the windshield. I fell off a roof. I've been shot and da-da-da-da-da. But you're not doomed to that. I'm telling you the thing that's missing in today's society is we have stinking thinking. And I'm going to preempt this. I'm going to jump the gun here uh, because there's a question about what would you do for coronavirus. I'm telling you, anybody that is a fear monger, you need to stay the heck away from them because there's a scripture in Timothy that says, For God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but one of power of love and of sound mind. We can think it, create it, speak it into existence. So throw in the good fish oil, throw in the B12, the folinic acid, the, the good folate. Throw in activated B6, et cetera, et cetera. And the probiotics. Don't the probiotics make a huge difference? Because I know gut health has got a lot to do with uh, your cloudy thinking. Or Yes, absolutely. Probiotics. We're getting better and better. And we, we've got probiotics that are so good that actually we're into a lot of things we don't have permission to talk about. The ones that trust us get pretty incredible results. The ones that do, it's not what you know, it's what you do. So, folks, if you're listening and not doing anything, you might as well go watch cartoons. Do something right. And uh, since you got off on the coronavirus, we're going to address this because I know a lot of people are in fear over this because now it's beginning to hit home here. Um, Brian would like to know how you could prepare for the coronavirus, what supplements or other things will help combat the virus. Uh, We have to tread very lightly here, but we're going to tell you things that help keep the immune system up, and we're going to tell you natural things that um, help, help, (laughs) help uh, with viral things. So maybe you could mention our uh, really great colloidal silver colloidal silver is not all the same Mm -hmm. i've never been a fan of colloidal silver because it will kill the good bacteria guess what we have one that does not and i've talked to the inventor slash ceo the head scientist the big kahuna he says our silver will not kill the probiotics there's three separate independent uh university studies and all of them prove that it does not kill the probiotics, but it kills the pathogenic organisms, and none of us know why. And this is coming from the big kahuna. It's called ASAPHCP, Health Max 30. The, the issue is, and we've got gut stuff for a uh, uh, better immune response. We have so much, and believe it or not, this stuff is 10, 20, 30 years ahead of the curve of most of what's going on. We have um, we have a limited supply, and yes, there the some people are saying it's going to be a big deal. Although I'm not one to succumb to fear. Now I don't want somebody with coronavirus to cough in my face, but uh, I'm doing stuff to strengthen my immune system. We do immune essentials. We have something called... Uh, yeah, look up those mushrooms, Google them, and then they're all put in immune essentials. And then we do, we have something called Vira uh, Pro. We have another one coming in called Vira Protect. Um, so there are, there are, you know, Laura Seedon, that's another great one. Olive Leaf, all of those things have natural antibiotic type properties to Laura them. Laura Seedon, Laura Seedon, Laura Seedon, pay attention. Health Max 30, colloidal silver, pay attention. <laughs> The stuff you're throwing into your GI tract, which is where most of your immune system is. Another thing I failed to mention on protecting the brain, we have something called Neuromag, which is magnesium L3 and 8. It's the only magnesium that crosses the brain, blood-brain barrier to bond with the aluminum and mercury and carry it out of your brain. It is awesome. Janet's been putting it in my drink, and I look, what in the heck are you doing? My memory's getting better. And she just grins. She does that with different things. She did it with the GPC also. It's like My wife's always putting something in my drink, and people say, but you let her mix your drink. She's going to poison you. I said, well, she ain't very good at that. So, well, uh, we don't want you ending up like that chemist that uh, 
Jonathan just went to the funeral where he lost his mind and didn't have that anymore. We have to keep you around a long but, time to keep it fresh. But using your brain is a wonderful, wonderful thing, but you also have to use yourself physically because there's plenty of research that says, well, people that exercise and do this and this and this and this have lowered insulin resistance. So that was a really incredible question from Tara. Yes, you've got to take care of your mind, but you've got to take care of your body. You have to take care of your spirit also. Very good. And if you're wondering, you know, you need to make sure your immune system is up to par, especially if you're scared of this uh, coronavirus coming through. And the best way to do that is through the lab. So you make sure everything's going like it should. Your adrenals, immune system, liver's doing great. Your trains are running through like they're supposed to. Go to our website at greenwisdomhealth.com. Click on the health survey tab and fill that out. It'll recommend a lab panel. Dr. Lewis generally calls you also, so you get a chance to speak with him as well. Please keep the questions coming in. We love them. They are helping everyone get well. And as a group together, we can all take care of each other. We hope you guys have a blessed week, and we'll be here next time on the Green Wisdom Health Show. Once again, our show has come to an end, but your hope in your health is only beginning. If you or a loved one are in need of a different outcome and are waiting for a brighter future, take the first step and go to our website and fill out the health survey. Please don't keep us a secret. If you know someone that could benefit from this podcast, please share this show with your friends and family. You're only one step away from a life worth living.